everyone, this is Heidi with Heidi and Franny's Garage. Several of you have asked about the history of our garage, and I want to start with a very special car. Our 1958 356 that we call Miss Ava. The reason why this car is so special is that it has been in my family since 1961. What I'd like to do is talk to you about the overall history of how I personally was involved with the car and then how Franny and I both eventually obtained the car from my uncle. It's quite a story. Back in 1961, my great uncle decided that he wanted a 356 and he really wanted a convertible even though he lived in seattle washington and i mean why else would you buy a convertible when you are living in seattle they were the more expensive of the 356s and that's what he wanted so he took out a loan for under two thousand dollars and he found this car from Bill Boeing Jr., the son of Bill Boeing, who started the aerospace company in Seattle. My uncle had the car for a while, and he used to drive it to and from work. Well, it was great, and he loved the car, but at one point he got ill, and he was no longer able to go to work anymore. In fact, he had to pretty much stay home all the time. When I first was introduced to the car, it was mid-70s. I was either eight or nine, and once a year, we were living in Colorado, and we would go to Washington State, which is where my mom is from, and go and visit family there. And this particular summer, my dad was not able to go with us, so we weren't able to do our normal road trip. So what we decided to do was take an airplane and when we got to my great aunt's, she was like, I want you to take uh, Uncle Bill's 356. It'd be great for you to um, take the car. It's a convertible. It's summertime. It'll be a great time to drive it. And we were so excited. We were so excited about having a convertible. And it was a, as they called it, a Porsche. I remember my first reaction to seeing the car. I was a little astounded. I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe we're going to drive that old car. Is it really going to run? I mean, I was kind of expecting, I think, more like a 1970s style 911 or something like that. And I saw this thing and I'm like, it's ancient. It's absolutely ancient. Well, that was the only car we had and we didn't rent one. We took the car and as we made our first stop, which was at a gas station, I was really surprised that the gas station attendant came up to my mom and he's like, wow, what year is your car? And she's like, it's a 1958. And he and my mom started talking and he's like, wow, that car's so beautiful. Then I was like, really? I mean, I was just sort of thinking this old thing. I mean, you have to realize that a perception of an eight year old is kind of like, whatever and so you know the car was fun my sister and i we would usually on road trips fight over who was going to sit in the front seat and the funny thing is is that this back seat doesn't have seat belts so we would actually end up arguing over who got to stretch out and be in the back so we'd have to take turns as far as who's going to be in the back seat and who was going to be in the front seat so um we really had a great time and we took the car over from Seattle to Yakima and we fell in love with the car and the car ran great. There was never any problems. So when we got back, my great uncle Bill, he said, when I pass away, I'm going to will you the car. I know that you guys will take great care of it and you guys really seem to love it. And we did, we got really attached to the car. And the sad thing was, is that my uncle did die just a few years later and he did will us the car, but my aunt, my great aunt, got in the way. And she said that we couldn't have the car. And I remember my mom telling me that. And at that point, I was really attached to the car. And I was pretty much devastated. I was like, uh, why aren't we getting the car? And she said um, something about roll bars. And so I actually asked my aunt. I mean, I knew her well enough. I went and, and asked her, why aren't you letting us have the car? Uncle Bill wanted us to have this car. 
and she said because I would never forgive myself if the car ever was rolled and there's no roll bar in the car you guys could be killed and so I mean that was it you know end of story there was you know basically no arguing with that and we didn't get the car and we were all very disappointed and the good news was that my aunt decided to give it to my mom's cousin and my mom's cousin basically said to my mom you know what I'm gonna keep it and when your girls are older then you guys can have the car back so he did he kept it and he kept it in Seattle's climate so kind of damp musky garage and so all those years that Uncle Bill kept it it was fine but then when he kept the car um, I'm not exactly sure what happened but the car rusted and all of the doors on the car in particular got all rusted out and um, the lower parts of the doors had to be replaced and so on. So anyway, at one point, I think it was about 13 years later after my uncle was gone, I believe that to be about 1990, my mom calls my cousin and said, I want you to ship the car to Colorado. Ani Lane will never know. And she didn't. She, um, she, by then she was in a retirement home and so we had it shipped out and my mom had a local repair person, you know, get the car running, did a paint job on the car, did a, uh, replaced the car seats and did some other things to the car. So, you know, my mom got this car, this beautiful car that she got to drive around. And it was really exciting. At that point I was in college and I was driving the car and we were going to car club events and everything like that. And it was super fun and once again fell in love with the car yet again. We had the car for five more years and really it was more my mom because I wasn't living at home by then and so I would come back now and then and visit and you know take pictures of the car, go on events with my mom but my mom decided that she was going to move back to Seattle because her mom was ill and at that point my parents were separated and so she sold a car to her brother and so i was really surprised because i didn't know that my uncle had worked on cars or anything like that my mom's like oh yeah he's really a lot like your grandpa you know he he works on cars and stuff like that and so um i was like that's great the car is going to stay in the family that's awesome we'll know you know where it is and and that was much better than her selling it to somebody that didn't know the car at all so my uncle came out in 1995 and drove the car from Denver with a friend all the way to Boston which is where he's living and it would have normally been okay in the summer but he decided to do this in November and the top was the original top and it wouldn't close all the way because my mom was always keeping the top down so it only closed I would say you know probably at about a six inch gap so it snowed the very first night when they were in Chicago and my uncle said it got about six inches of standing water in the bottom of the car, ruined all of this German carpet, it all had to be replaced and the floorboards, they all got rusted out. So my uncle fixed the floorboards, he fixed the German carpet and he got a new top on the car. So that was some of the stuff that my uncle had done. The paint had already been done by my mom and fixing the rust and all that. So my uncle then had the car and he didn't drive it a lot. He kept it garaged in his barn, which you will see in some of the video. And basically that was the end of it until 2005. I hope you enjoyed this video and the introduction of Ava to our family. Stay tuned tomorrow. You'll get to see when Franny meets Ava for the very first time. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Consider ringing the notification bell if you want to be notified just as soon as a video goes up. And in the meantime, safe travels. Bye.